Hi, I'm Megan West with My Faith Votes, and I'm honored to bring a conversation today with Rebecca Friedrichs. You have an amazing story, so tell us a little bit about a monumental thing that has happened in your life that is affecting this country. Sure. So I have been a public school teacher in California for 28 years, and throughout my entire career, I was forced to fund unions who would take my money and spend it on far-left causes. Not only would they use my money, but they would coerce and bully myself and other teachers to actually do campaigning for their far-left political agenda. They're also pushing a social and sexual agenda into our schools using teacher money, and teachers have no idea. So as a Christian, I tried to fight this from the inside, and I couldn't make my voice heard. I even served as a union leader. All I got for my trouble was bullied, um, but I learned a lot, and I discovered that I had to fight it from without. So God laid it on my heart to start exposing the unions through editorials, and within six months of my first editorial, I became the lead plaintiff in a national lawsuit headed to the United States Supreme Court. Wow. And it was 10 Christian teachers from California and the Christian Educators Association International standing together. And we sued California Teachers Association and the National Education Association. And our argument was simple. It was a First Amendment argument. Teachers should be able to decide for ourselves without fear or coercion whether or not to fund unions. So what was the outcome of the case at the Supreme Court and what's happening with it now? Our case was heard in January 2016, and the whole world knew that the teachers were going to win five to four in favor of liberty. And one month later, Justice Scalia died, and we lost his vote. So we had a four to four decision. We actually tried to have a hearing again, and the justices rejected us on my birthday of all days. So our case was lost. But I told you earlier that it was God that urged me to do this and you know I just went to him and he told me in my heart just keep giving your two mites Rebecca just keep fighting so I kept fighting I started interviewing teachers I've written a book about the experience and we're exposing the unions but while I was doing that another case came behind my case called Janice versus AFSCME the Janice case won mm. on my birthday June 27 2018 so now all teachers across the entire country and all other government and workers, including DMV, firefighters, police officers, all of us are now free to pay unions nothing. So as a parent and at the local level, we see there's not a lot of engagement from parents to influence things like school board elections. How would you talk to especially Christians who are leaving their influence on the table to get involved from the local level to make changes there? If those parents don't get involved, we're going to lose our schools. Um, we used to have here in the United States of America Judeo-Christian values built into our entire school structure. That's what it, the, all the curriculums were built upon. The McGuffey Reader, when you read through them, they're full of scripture. And now we have a government claiming this separation of church and state that does not exist in our Constitution, that is a misconception. Parents and teachers are believing it and they're not engaging. And the more we do that, the more the government takes over. And unfortunately, the government, with their connection with the teachers' unions, is bringing in some very horrific sex ed lessons um, All across the country. We're seeing it in multiple states, too. It, actually, it started um, at the UN. It's been being pushed through the UN for at least 20 years. I've seen it at the teacher union level for almost 20 years. And people would probably be surprised to learn that it's Planned Parenthood that's behind a lot of that as well. Yes. I, I actually think most people would, wouldn't be surprised that it's Planned Parenthood because that's what they do, right? But the teachers unions are in partnership with Planned Parenthood, Southern Poverty Law Center, the ACLU, Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, Human Rights Campaign, all of these very powerful far-left organizations that are literally indoctrinating our children and our teachers and taking over our schools. It's really vital that Christian parents, teachers, pastors wake up 
and get involved attending local school board meetings. You will be bullied when you speak out for what's right as a taxpayer and as a parent. They are driving a wedge between parents and teachers, parents and administrators. But what I would urge parents to do is to get involved and not get angry at good and loving teachers. It's not the teachers. It's the unions and their activists that are dividing us. Stand together with teachers, and we need our pastors desperately to stand. You know, and I've seen something interesting because we've posted articles on My Faith Votes about different things happening in school districts throughout the nation. And I always find it interesting when people comment, they say, well, just step away from the public school and homeschool your kids. But that's not always the answer necessarily. So how would you speak to someone who says, just step out of it, don't even be a part of it? I don't blame them. And if you want to step out, great. But they're coming after you too. The teachers union specifically state in their documents that they don't like homeschooling and they would like to end it. They would like all children in government schools. So we need our homeschoolers to get involved, number one. Number two, about 95% of children are in public schools. And from what I read in God's word, it's better to have a millstone about your neck and to be thrown in the deepest sea than to let harm come to these little ones. So if we're closing our eyes and letting little ones be harmed in our public schools, we're not walking our Christian faith. So it's very important that we all stand for every single innocent child, especially those whose parents might be drug addicts or might be disengaged in whatever fashion, not alive. We have to stand for all of those children. It's, it's key. Everyone, not just parents, but everyone in the community. Exactly. Teachers, we're called to be servants. We're called to protect and educate children. Children are leaving our schools, and they can't even read. But they know all about this uh, far-left sexual agenda. That's, that's just horrible. Mm -hmm. Teachers need to be able to teach. And if you're a teacher and you're not standing up to protect children, really should leave the profession. Interesting. So what practical tips would you give us, especially for those maybe who don't have kids in public school? What can we do at the local level that would extend all the way up to the state and national level to you know, have influence as far as what's going on with our kids? Well, number one, we have to get involved and vote. But we have to vote with, we have to educate ourselves first. So many people are voting against their values. For example, I taught in a, a school district, highly immigrant, 42 different languages on my campus. Almost all of those families were pro-life. How do I know? I did home visits. I saw what was in their home. These families stood for good traditional values, but they weren't voting those values. They were voting for people who were against those values. So get educated and vote. Um, if you're a teacher, you need to discover what your union's really funding because the teachers unions are the root cause and the root funding of every single problem we have in our schools and our country and they are directly attacking our Judeo-Christian values. So Christian teachers need to get educated. They can't stand against these unions alone. We get bullied, constantly bullied. Parents and faith leaders need to stand with our teachers. Teachers are isolated and terrified right now. If we dare to speak out at the school level, we're shut down. Some of us are fired, lose our jobs. We need the church standing with us. So we all just need to come together. We all need to get educated. We all need to stand up to these bullies and vote. Absolutely, and cover it with prayer. Oh, absolutely. And you talk about praying for teachers and kind of an initiative you have for that. Explain to us a little bit more about that. Well, we started a nonprofit called For Kids in Country, and the number one thing God laid on my heart was, this has to be built on a foundation of prayer. So we have a prayer team with this amazing little lady. She's beautiful. Her name's Linda, leading all these folks in prayer every week and sending out prayer emails. Those prayers are vital. We can't get anything done without the prayers. We're foolish. If we think we can fight evil without God and His goodness on our side. So that's number one. Moms getting together to pray, teachers praying, people walking around the schools and praying for the schools. That's what we need. The prayer is key. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the work that you are doing. I know this is a challenging area to be in because you're up against so much opposition. How can we be praying for you as you're in this work? Oh, thank you so very much. Um, people like me who fight against teachers unions who bring in $5 billion a year in tax-free 
dues and use it to deceive teachers, teachers that I love, teachers who love children. Um, we're standing up truly against Goliath. And then they have all their tentacles into the government. And so we literally are standing up against giant forces. And, and we're just these little people, but we're God's people. And the only way we have the power to do it is through prayer. So I, I would just ask them to please pray for us every day, pray for you every day, join us. I find so many people come in a dark room and thank me for what I do, but they won't come out and speak out. As long as we're in the dark, we're not shining the light of truth on the darkness and we're not gonna win. So come out of the dark is the number one thing I would say to them. Join us, shine your light, don't hide it under a bushel. Absolutely. And, and just, you know, shine a light on that darkness so we can win and protect our kids and, and restore our republic. Amen, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you.